Hey everyone, Kevin P. McAuliffe here for Rampant Design Tools, and I'm back again with another tutorial. And in this lesson, we're talking Rampant Studio Mats, Volume 2. And in this lesson, I want to focus on working with them inside of Avid Media Composer first, as well as the full version of Media Composer. Now, before we get rolling, I want to talk a little bit about Studio Mats Volume 2 and what makes it unique from the first version. Let's Command or Alt and Tab into Google Chrome. As you can see, I am on the Rampant Design Tools website. What we're going to do is navigate over to the Products dropdown, and I'm going to navigate down to the Animated Mats. Now, one thing that I love about the Rampant Design Tools website is how interactive it is. I don't need to worry about going in, clicking on things, trying to find a sample of what these different products look like. All I need to do is to simply mouse over one of them, and as soon as I do, a preview will pop up and show me exactly what's going on with this volume, tell me what's included in it, and even tell me the price. Now, one thing that makes Studio Mats Volume 2 stand out from the rest is the fact that not only do you get these fantastic looking elements that you see in front of you, but what the Rampant Design Tools team has also done is they've broken down these style mats to give you the different elements for you to work with. So for example, you'll see in just a second, if you have an element that actually has seven working parts with it, you're not only gonna get the full element itself with all those moving parts, but you're gonna be able to get in, as you can see in front of you right now, and separate things into the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, in this case, parts, so that you can get in and put exactly what you want exactly where you need it to be. And as you can see, of course, no plugins are required with these products. They work just as well inside of any editing or non-linear editing application you might be working with. All right, let's just hide Chrome. Let's get into Media Composer first, and let me show you how we're gonna work with this fantastic product. All right, so let's Command or Alt and Tab into Media Composer first, and once we're here, I do have a couple shots that I've already brought in for us to work with. And I picked these two shots on purpose because there's a great juxtaposition between the city life and the country life. And this is really where these rampant design tools elements really come in and really help you punch messages like this home. They're really great, very organic looking elements. So let's bring some of them in here. And what we're going to do is we're going to do this two ways. I'm going to bring in the full matte element that we're going to work with as just one element on top of our footage. And then what we're going to do is we're going to get in and we're going to break this down into the two parts, in this case for this element, so you can see how we can work with them to put this together. All right, inside of Media Composer first, we're going to want to link to this footage. What I'm going to do is right click, we're going to come down to input, and I'm going to select the source browser. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to navigate on my Media One hard drive to where I have this footage saved, it's inside my footage folder. And I'm just going to switch the view to the list view. It's just a little bit easier for me to see here. I'm going to come down to my rampant folder here. And here is the three elements that go with element number two of my studio mats. Now remember, this element is element number two. And element number two is made up of two parts. So for example, if element seven was made up of eight parts, I would have element seven and the eight parts that go with it. All right. Now, something else that I do want to mention, two things. One, with Studio Mats Volume 2, you get 102 different style mats. Now, keep in mind, that's not including all the different parts. That's 102 elements, and then you get all the parts on top of that. Now, these elements are also 4K elements. Now, inside of Media Composer first, you're limited to working in HD projects. But if you're working in the full version of Media Composer, you can utilize these 4K elements in 4K with any 4K project you happen to be working on. Now I wanna show you a common problem that a lot of editors run into right away when bringing in these style mats. I'm gonna select the three elements and I'm gonna say link. Now you're gonna notice that what has happened is as soon as I've brought these elements in, you'll see that they come in with a mat key. Now that's actually a good thing and a bad thing, depending on how we want to look at this. Now I say bad thing, and I don't mean that in a negative way. I just mean that in for our workflow kind of way. Because one thing that I do love about these elements is that they are created with alpha channels, with mat keys. So you can utilize that mat information if you want to. In our case, we're not going to. But just having it there gives us great flexibility. Because remember, you purchase this product you can use it in Media Composer. If you happen to have After Effects, you can use it in that as well. 
you can use this across any product that you happen to own. Okay, so keep that in mind. Now, like I said, for the purposes of what we're doing, I don't want to bring in the matte information with these clips. So how do I tell Media Composer to ignore that or Media Composer first in our case right now? Now, keep in mind, what I'm going to show you right now is the same inside of Media Composer first and Media Composer. I'm just going to delete these elements. I'm going to navigate up to my settings and I'm going to come down to the link setting. Again, the link settings available in both Media Composer first and Media Composer. And what I want to do here is I'm going to navigate down to the alpha channel information and I'm simply going to tell Media Composer first or Media Composer to ignore it. Now once I say OK, I'm going to come back to the source browser. We're just going to bring those same three elements in and you'll now see that they come in without any alpha information. OK, now what's also important to keep in mind, I did mention before 4K elements. All Media Composer first is going to do is it's going to downscale those elements from 4K to HD so you can work with them just as though they were originally native HD elements. OK, let's take just our waterfall clip here. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take 10 seconds of it. OK, let's make sure we actually say 10 seconds and not 10 frames. There we go. Perfect. I'm going to take this. I'm just going to drop it into a new timeline. Now, for the purposes of what we're doing, I don't want any audio, just video. All right. So let's take the main studio element that you can see right here, studio mat element right here. And we want to take this, we want to work with this in our timeline, and we'd like to have this reveal our waterfall. So here's how we're going to go about doing this. I've put our video onto video track number one. I'm now going to create a new video track by pressing Command or Control and Y, depending on whether you're on Mac or Windows. And what we're going to do is we're going to take this style element or this studio mat, and we're just going to remove the out point, and I'm going to drop the entire element into our timeline. Now you'll see it goes a little bit long, and that's okay. Now you'll notice that we get a little S here telling me that this is a spatial adapter, meaning that this element is larger than the frame that we're working in. So it's been taken and shrunk down to fit the frame. Now what I want to do is I just want to remove this last two seconds of media from our style mat or our studio mat to have it fit to time. Now I'd like this element to transition in and transition out. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pull two seconds out of the middle of our studio mat so that it's now perfect timing. You'll see it's going to transition in and then it's going to transition out. But now of course that does beg the question, how do we actually utilize the mat information to do the effect that we want? Well, let me show you. I'm going to call up the effects palette by pressing command or control and eight, depending on again, if you're on Mac or Windows, and we're going to head on down to the key section right here. And you'll notice that one of the effects that we have is a mat key. I'm simply going to take that mat key and I'm going to drag it and drop it down onto the studio mat. Now you'll notice that we can see a little bit of footage in here. It's not quite what we want it to be because we actually want to invert this studio mat. So how we do that is to simply navigate back over to the effect editor. I'm simply going to say invert key. And what we now have, if we come back to the beginning, is our element transition on with that studio mat. Now, of course, when we get to the next part of the shot, it's immediately going to revert back to the way we had it before with no effect. So all we need to do is to simply step into effects mode, grab that effect right out of the effects editor, drag it and drop it down onto the second part of that studio mat shot. And guess what you have now if we hit the space bar? We now have that animation working exactly the way that we want it to work. All right, now that's all fine and good, but what if we now wanted to get in and break this studio mat down into its two pieces? If we didn't have access to the separate mat elements, we'd be getting in, we'd be trying to crop parts, we'd be doing a little bit of roto, trying to get all that to work. But again, the team at Rampant Design Tools has been thinking ahead, knowing what you want to do and giving you the flexibility to work the way that you want to work. So let me show you how we're now going to do this. I'm going to take the studio mats, part one. You'll see there's our bottom element. What we're going to do is the exact same thing that we had done before, except what I'm going to do is I'm just going to drop this in here, part one there, perfect. And we're just going to remove the out point. We're going to drop that in at the end there so that it transitions out. Very nice. Okay. Now remember, we're just going to be going back to the effects palette. We're going to grab that matte key effect. We're going to drag and drop. This isn't anything we haven't already done before. And what we want to do is just to invert that key. So what's going to happen is that part of the element is going to transition on. Okay. 
Now again, much like we just done, we're simply going to take that effect, drag and drop it down to part two, just like that. And what we now have is the element transitioning in and transitioning out, very nice, okay? Now let's add the city shot to the top part of our frame. What we're gonna do is add two more video layers, Command or Control and Y to add those two video layers. Let's first take our footage shot, which is going to be this one right here. I'm just gonna grab any part of it. It's more so the actual city that I want, and I think we're gonna grab it more so from the start here, probably right about there, perfect. Let's take this shot, drop it in just like such. Again, exactly like what we had done before. Let's come to the studio mat, part two. We're just gonna hit T to mark that entire clip. We're just gonna drop that into the topmost layer. And of course, what we do need to do is to add an edit point right here so that we can make sure that this element does transition out the way that we want it to. Very nice. Now, what's very cool about this, again, we can simply drag this effect right down onto that topmost layer, again, like we just done like this. And as long as we're viewing the topmost layer, you'll now see that we have our element transitioning in to give us two shots in this fantastic studio mat. Now, this does bring up a bit of a problem. Okay, now when I say a problem, it's not necessarily a problem, more like a temporary limitation, I like to call it. The city's working the way that I like it to work on the top, because to be honest, I don't really care about the Staten Island Ferry that we can't see down towards the bottom of the shot. It's really the city that I want to see. However, in the bottom part of the shot, I'd really like to see a better part of the waterfall. It's not exactly the best part. We got a bit of a rock and a little bit of the water. So what I'd like to do is I'd like to center this bottom shot up just a little bit. So how are we going to go about doing that? Well, remember, the matte effects are revealing the footage, but we still have the ability to get in and to manipulate that footage however we want, utilizing effects. What I'm going to do is head back to the effects palette. I'm going to come up to the blend category, and I'm going to grab the 3D warp effect, and I'm going to drag it and drop it down onto our waterfall shot. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to either coming over here and adjusting the position parameter, which is right here, or I'm simply gonna grab the shot and just drag it south, just like that, to reveal a little bit more of a desirable area of that shot, just like that. And what we now have is this shot looking exactly the way that we want it to look. Now, depending on the type of footage you're working in and whether you're working in Media Composer first or Media Composer, you may need to get in and give your footage a quick render. So what we're gonna do is we're going to navigate up to the top toolbar. I'm gonna to head on over to the timeline dropdown. And what we're gonna do is simply render into out. What we're gonna do is we're gonna render this onto my Media One drive. We'll just give it a quick render here. And once the render's done, all we're gonna do is simply jump back to the beginning. We're gonna hit play on the keyboard and you'll now see our studio mat working in real time, looking totally awesome. Now keep in mind, the effect that I added to my waterfall shot here was a static position change, but I could get in and animate that if I wanted to. If I wanted to have that shot sort of pan down or tilt down over the duration of the move, I could easily do that as well. We could change this up however we want to change it up. And again, depending on the element that we choose, we can be as flexible as we want. We could have four shots of different waterfalls, five shots of the city getting in there, changing with those studio mats. All right, now what I wanna do is I wanna do a quick switch over just to show you how the technique has worked exactly the same inside the full version of Avid Media Composer. All right, so as you can see, we are now in the full version of Media Composer. And there's no need for me to show you the workflow again because the workflow is exactly the same as you saw it inside of Media Composer first. The only difference here is I've changed up our shots just a little bit, but as you can see, the end product looks exactly the same. So whether you're a new editor cutting your teeth inside of Media Composer first, or a seasoned editor working in 4K projects inside of the full version of Media Composer, these 4K studio mats are gonna take your work to the next level every time.